Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Soccer Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Fairway, along with Nabisco, Frito-Lay, and Sarah Lee, is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Girls Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Soccer Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. for state championship soccer here from the capital city in Des Moines from the county soccer park it's time for the class 3a state title game as it's an all city showdown as Ankeny Centennial takes on the Hawkettes of Ankeny and good afternoon, everyone, wherever you may be with Justin Borster. I'm B.J. Shaven, and what a matchup here for the title game. You've got the top-seeded Centennial taking on the second-seeded Ankeny Hawkettes. Well, again, we have one versus two, and speaking to both coaches, the Ankeny Hawkettes are changing their shape today. They're going to go 3-5-2. Coach Bird says he wants to go for it. And talking to uh, Coach Allen, he's going to go out in a 4-2-3-1. I think we're in for a cracker today. Let's take a look at the tournament resumes for each of these two teams on how they got here. First step for Ankeny. They're going for the school's fourth state title, top scoring team in all of 3A. They have eight of 11 starters committed to play in college. They won the 2A title back in 2015. Now for Centennial. They've been on quite a roll as of late. In fact, the top overall seat looking for their second state championship. They're very balanced. They've shut out their last six opponents, and they won 10 games this year by a goal. They know how to play in the tight ones. It's time now for a special honor. Let's go to Jason Esslinger. School, community, and the coaching profession. Present, presenting the Golden Plaque Award is IGHSAU Executive Director Gene Berger and Soccer Administrator Lisa Brinkmeyer. The 2018 Golden Plaque of Distinction soccer recipient is Todd Hornaday of Bettendorf. The 2018 Golden Plaque of Distinction recipient is Todd Hornaday of Bettendorf. Todd has been teaching and coaching at Bettendorf for 21 seasons and owns a record of 325 and 86. He's guided 13 Bulldog teams to the state tournament and has the distinction of coaching the very first IGHSAU state soccer champion when he led Bettendorf to a state title in 1998, the first year soccer was sanctioned by the IGHSAU. In addition to his 1998 state title, his Bulldog teams have reached the state semifinals four other times, placing second in 2010. Tan has also been a strong soccer ad advocate off of the playing field. He is the current soccer chair with the Iowa Girls Coaches Association and also served a term on the IGHSAU Soccer Coaches Advisory Committee. The NFHS has honored him as its state and regional coach of the year in 2010. He was a finalist for the National High School Athletic Coaches Association National Coach of the Year in 2017, and he was inducted into the Iowa High School Soccer Coaches Association's Hall of Fame in 2015. Todd is the son of Larry and Joe Hornaday, and his children are Shelby and Charlie. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to this year's soccer recipient of the Golden Plaque of Distinction from Bettendorf, Todd Hornaday. Here with Todd are his children, Shelby and Charlie, along with Bettendorf boys soccer coach, Ben Pennington. Congratulations, Todd.
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to County Soccer Complex for the 2018 Iowa Farm Bureau Girls State Soccer Championship and this Class 3A Championship match between the Hawkettes of Ankeny and the Jaguars of Ankeny Centennial. Now let's meet today's players and coaches. First, the non-starters for the Ankeny Hawkettes. Wearing number double zero, Sydney Truman. Number one, Lena Routson. Number eight, Nicole Dacus. Number 10, Kenzie Mackey. Number 11, Taylor Peterson. Number 12, Cambry Mason. Number 14, Paige Bennett. Number 19, Lauren McMahon. Number 20, Mallory Roheader. Number 24, Ella Morris. And number 25, Ellie Gretz. Now let's meet the starters for the Hawkettes. Wearing number zero, Brenny Frederick. Number two, Olivia Shire. Number five, Morgan Bennett. Number nine, Chloe Cooker. Number 13, Riley Whitaker. Number 15, Kate Schaefer. Number 17, Haley Osborne. Number 18, Jalen Keeker. Number 22, Alexis Legg. Number 23, Sage Adamson. And number 26, Ashley Harrington. The Hawkettes are led by head coach Dan Birch who is assisted by Nancy Javot and John Cook. Now let's meet the non-starters for the Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. Wearing number three, Kira Wilson. Number five, J.C. Hall. Number six, Peyton Silvers. Number eight, Miranda Wood. Number 12, Kenzie Langstrott. Number 13, Naomi Lopez. Number 14, Jaden Treberg. Number 19, Marissa Smith. Number 21, Hannah Hurren. Number 23, Jillian Nifang. And number 25, Emily Vortherms. Now let's meet the starters for the Jaguars. Wearing number two, Kenzie Geiger. Number seven, Megan Gray. Number nine, Tori Eubin. Number 10, Olivia Wee. Number 11, Lizzie Johnson. Number 15, Lexi Gutnecht. Number 16, Allie Wyckoff. Number 17, Carly Jensen. Number 18, Paige Freddy. Number 20, Marissa Lopez. And number 24, Olivia Brown. The Jaguars are led by head coach Chris Allen, who is assisted by Nick White, Danielle Jackson, Sam Behrens, and Maggie Lindemann. Our officials for today's match are head referee Jennifer Dunn, assistant referees Crystal Tate and Miranda Thielen, and our fourth official is Sheila Edwards. Good luck to both teams, and let's play some championship soccer! 
Well, let's get ready for this all-city showdown between Ankeny and Ankeny Centennial. The wind now picking up out of the south. It is hot and it is muggy. 90 degrees out with the heat index feels like 97. Winds out of the south at 9, but gusting up to 15. So there is going to be a slight advantage to those that will be moving the ball to the north. As we see Centennial and Ankeny, again, it's the first intra-city title game in girls' soccer. And let's take a look at how each of these two teams got to this position here right now. And both doing it in, in relatively clean fashion. Centennial, the top overall seed, disposed of Council Bluffs Abraham Lincoln. They disposed of Waukee in the semifinals. And for Ankeny, a victory, victorious against Linmar, and then outlasted Valley yesterday in overtime to make their way here to the title game. So how much is in the tank for each of these two teams? You know, they're gonna be going after it. It'd be fun to see the energy throughout this one. So here we go. Centennial and Ankeny. Of course, the Hawkettes wearing their maroon uniforms with white numbers trimmed in gold. And for Centennial, they're home whites with black numbers trimmed in silver. For those of you and living around the Ankeny area, I know there was a lot of heartburn about splitting up of the high school. Well, I give you this state championship game to let you know that it worked. <laughs> a lot of talent amongst the entire Ankeny school district. And it definitely did work. <laughs> Going into this game, uh, I was talking to Coach Birch. They went to overtime yesterday. Um, I asked how the players were feeling and if there are any injuries or tired legs. And he said, no, nope, we feel very, very confident about this game as we're underway. So the Hawkettes will have the wind at their back. As we move the ball down the field with Centennial again, wearing their white uniforms. And again, the top overall seed coming into this one, their only loss this year was to St. Charles North out of Missouri. And that was a close one at three to one. They put a lot of pressure on and gave up a late goal down the stretch. So where do you think the keys of the game are, Justin, for this one between the two? I tell you what, it's going to be a very close matchup. I think if... Um if Centennial can get the ball um, into the wide areas, uh, Kenzie Geiger's been fantastic. She's got blistering pace. If they can get in behind and deliver, they've got Megan Gray on the other side in the 11 roll, so on the left. I mean, could cause problems as they force this corner right now. I see, uh, I see that um, uh, Ankeny uh, Hawkettes have made a change. They put uh, Chloe Cooker up front today for the start. Yesterday, they, they had her at center back, so she's up alongside Lexi Leg. Dangerous, quick and very good in 1v1 situations. So here's Jensen as the Jags widen up the field as they dump it towards the net. Here's the header, and this is going to be deflected away. Back towards the middle, and now we have a foul ball. Your referee today is Jennifer Dunn. Very good defending with Olivia Brown, who's very good. She's the center back for the Centennials. A very, very good player in the air. Very good defending there from the Hawkettes in the box. Centennial won the game earlier this year at 3-2. to two, And a, I mean, just a tight contest. The Jags just had enough to win it. Again, this is their third game in as many days. What's in the tank? We'll have to wait and find out as the Hawkettes play chase as Cooker tried to chase the ball down. Centennial able to turn things around a little bit. Up the far sideline with Bennett. Jostling with the ball, now Bennett trying to clear it out. Fantastic footwork as again they try to spread the field here. Now the Hawkettes on pace. And that one headed back out. There's a blast from up top, but it's blocked. What a block there by Ubin. You've been able to knock that one down. And Centennial. Turns the tide, now down the field with Gray. Gray will lift, leave one towards the middle, and this is just knocked back out by Frederick. And we have a stoppage here of play. 
Well, this is ha this has good pace and tempo to it here early on. Yeah, going back to the block from Urban, that was critical, in fact. I mean, she's start her starting positions were good. She got behind the ball, and at the end of the day, you just need Dang to block it. And again, a lot of contact. And they are going to let them play. As coming up, the keeper, Marissa Lopez, the senior, who's only given up eight goals this season, will punt that ball into the wind. So the Jags dumped it into the zone. Ankeny right there defensively. Now they try to stretch it out, trying to target Whitaker. Neither team making a run. They both know each other extremely well. In fact, some of them play on the same club team. So they kind of know the tendencies of one another. And here they are battling against each other in this final. Ball is right at midfield. Our third championship game of the day in our final one. 1A went to Davenport Assumption. That one clean. Winning it 8-0. Now here's an opportunity deep inside the zone. The left foot towards the net. This one's up and in. A goal! Ankeny able to bury it with the left foot. From Morgan Bennett, the senior midfielder putting it through. Watch this. That is... A tremendous goal. Morgan Bennett receives the ball out wide, cuts it on a from a, le a right foot to a left and bends it into the top corner with a bit of a dip and a swerve. Fantastic stuff, and what a start by the Hawkettes. Top shelf, left corner, using the wind at her back. Just going back to the earlier ball that was played, and Leg received it, coming in short, and she played a lovely ball, splitting all the defenders for Bennett to get onto it. And Centennial will have a deep throw in here. Make it, yep, should be Centennial. Now they're going to say that is out on, yeah, out on Centennial. Go for the ball. The one to keep in mind is Alexis Leg for Ankeny. Really the decoy there on that last goal. Now here's a shot up high, going to be hauled in by Frederick. It's still early. I mean, we've only been in the game six minutes, so anything can happen. New state champion this year in 3A. Last year, Ames won it. Was knocked out prior to the state tournament. Of course, dealt with a lot of injuries this year. They were loaded to come back. That's how much injuries can play a role and how your season's going to go. So Centennial with the throw in from Olivia Wee. Trying to throw it in on deep. Should have kept possession there with that throw. She had Geiger in front of her. Would have been a better option. In Centennial, so balanced. Now have to play from behind here. That first goal, from what we've seen in state tournaments past in the third game in as many days, as you, now you got the hand fight out top. And this is going to be called against Centennial as Wyckoff and Cooker were going at it. Hawkettes will have the free kick here. Ken, if you're just joining us late, Hawkettes get on the board first. Aggressive play as Shire trying to dump it on in deep. Centennial back defensively. Now they scoot it up behind by Olivia Brown. Fair play on the tackle attempt as Bennett will roll it forward. Bennett will be booming in confidence after that goal. I see a, a little bit of a tactical change playing Bennett, Bennett out on the right-hand side so she can cut in onto her left foot. Geiger, lost possession. Good defensively by Osborne. Oh, 
Now they try to heat the streak to Schaefer down the stretch. Streaker with a shot of the right foot, but it goes wide and behind the net. Trying to bend it back in, just cannot get the right trajectory. The advantage there with Bennett wide on the right-hand side is that she can play a ball in and deliver with her right foot and her left foot, so it, it's going to be really, really difficult for Wyckoff to deal with. That wind, a factor, that held up the ball before it could get across midfield. Now the big boom. And this is going to be wide left, the shot attempt by Osborne. The defender has struck for two goals during the season. A little creative from her position. Centennial with eyes on her. The win, of course, at the advantage at the back of Ankeny. And getting a goal out of Morgan Bennett's leg with the assist. And came right at the five minute mark in. Now look out, Centennial. Trying to run it ahead and we're gonna get an opportunity to see what Megan Gray, the senior midfielder, can do. Well, as you can see, Megan Bray, Gray with a lot of space breaking into the box. Yeah, correct call. Uh, definitely clipped Gray on the right heel. Sage Adamson with the penalty. And this is out in front. Big moment of truth to try to tie this game up. Frederick's going to be challenged. Gray with the penalty kick here. Let's see what happens. And the kick, and she gets it. Goal! And we're tied up at one. Just like that, we've got some excitement here in the Class 3A title game. The penalty coming back to hurt Ankeny as Centennial buries it on the penalty. Megan Gray. Gray hit, hit that with some power as... Uh... Hopefully we'll see in a bit. Yeah, Gray hit it with some power, but Fredericks was actually very close to it. If it was a softer take and strike, she would have saved it. Miranda Wood now coming into the game for Lexi Gutnick. So there's her first sub of the game. Shire down the near side. Left foot tries to center it. This one redirected out. Huge goal, though, for Centennial. Going to stem the tide as the Hawkeyes were starting to clamp down in this one. Very good challenge there from the Hawkeyes. Clean on the challenge. Free ball to the middle one by Centennial. Now they hit Gray on the outside wing again, and... We'll put it towards the net. This one will be sucked up by Frederick. Boy, Frederick quickly got the ball out. Here's Shire. Towards the middle. Now they try to loop it ahead. Lopez going to come up and field it. With a quick toss out with leg. Right in the area. This will go to Ankeny. Kicker with the quick toss. Hawkett's looking to build patiently out of the back. Now that the game's all square, 1-1. One, one. Now try to drive it, but it's intercepted by Gray. Already with a goal and taking it deep. Gray with the shot on net, but just blocked at the post by Frederick. Very, very dangerous run by Gray, breaking the line. She's going to be a handful out there on the left-hand side. Good save, though, by Frederick, diving to her right. Leg trying to loft it ahead. Brown knocks it back. 
There's leg, and again, Lopez will step up. Decent ball played in by Harrington there, looking for leg. She didn't quite move and get a left foot to it. What has Centennial done here to change the momentum? Well, I'll tell you what, with uh, Hoquette playing in a 3-5-2, on the actual penalty, Gray was sitting in heaps of space out there. And playing the three, they pressed three on the line, but she dropped into the space, and Bennett was pushed forward. So Bennett didn't recover quick enough in time, and then Gray being 1v1 is going to cause problems. Looking forward, there might have to be a change in the, in the Hoquette system if one of the sixes can come out and cover. Lee with some good handling as they dump it back to reset. Back to Lopez. And they play it out back with Eubin. I like those both teams trying to play out the back and build, build from the back and through the lines. Especially if there's no pressure on the ball. Here's Shire. Well, he couldn't get a handle on it. And back down for Centennial with Wood. Hockett's trying to drive it. You see how much space there is out there. Gray, Gray's pass was just intercepted, but the runs from the midfield were good. And plus the whole catch will just split open there with a lot of space down the middle. Leg trying to stretch this one out. Off and into the corner. A good battle. And one by Centennial. Here's Gray. Going to try to find the streaker. And they might have an opportunity here. Geiger towards the net. Geiger, go! How about that? Kenzie Geiger from the point. Putting it through. Got a little bit of space. The initial pass from wide on the left-hand side. And Geiger's inverted run inside the defender was fantastic. Withheld the challenge, lots of strength, and just slotted it past the keeper. So Centennial, who gave up a goal early on to Ankeny, now has the lead after goals from Gray and Geiger. Well, Me Megan Gray's ball that she played in with her right foot was absolutely pinpoint, on, on spot, and the run from Geiger, well-timed, getting inside the defender. Hockett's being challenged here, and these two teams have played open here today, putting a lot at risk. Went 3-2 early on, but we have a ton of goals here just 15 minutes into this one. Not going to be a defensive battle. I've noticed a change in shape here with the Hawkettes. They've gone four at the back now. They've changed from a 3-5-2 into a 4-3-3, but they need to keep their shape. Breaking away for Centennial. It's Freddy. And they put it out into open space. Still in play. And back down as they pump it ahead to Cooker. And Cooker will be ruled out. Centennial will throw it in. Nearing our first water break of the day as officials with the heat and humidity of course third game in as many days We're going to give these teams an opportunity to get refreshment near the 20 minute mark of each half so again if you like offense this is your game here so far now from the corner going to be blocked back out by Osborne Good clearance by Osborne, but no real threat in the box. They only had Langstrad coming in on the far post. 
They just needed the extra players to break the line. Gray again with the terrific move will center it and now it's deflected away. Centennial will hold it in. We're just trying to clear it out that time. It was Roe Weeder. Big day today so far from Megan Gray, number seven for Ankeny Centennial. A goal and an assist already. Goal coming on a penalty kick. Ankeny will have it back. Cooker with the dump down. Boy, both fan bases are into this one. One of the larger crowds we've had for a 3A title game in some time. I don't think there's anybody in Ankeny right now. They're all down here. You might be able to cruise down or labor right now. And you know how that traffic it is sometimes. <laughs> so from the back, they try to play it forward. So Brown. Out of Jensen. Had it taken away or disrupted on the play by Bennett. Hawkett's with an opportunity. Cooker. And what a battle over on that far sideline. Brown and Cooker. So coming in is going to be Osborne. And a whole lot of substitutions here, Justin. Yeah, quick rotation, as you can see. Obviously, the heat, the humidity factor, it's, it's paying its toll. Give the players a quick rest, get them back in, maybe a quick chat. I'll tell you what. Back down the field with Ankeny. Again, Brown will hold it in. Well, he's playing four pack deep as Centennial, and it's paying off. You mentioned holding your lines. We've had the scoring, and now the defense starting to settle in here, but the midfield is open. Now the shot up high, but will go wide for Morgan Bennett. Yeah, like you said, BJ, I mean, the back line for Centennial, very experienced. They've, they've hardly allowed any goals. Um, they have a very good goalkeeper in Lopez as well. Uh, they all play club soccer here um, up in the Ankeny area, except for Eubin. But, you know, they've all played together. Both teams coming in at 19 and 2 on the year. Seeded 1 and 2. Centennial getting that top seed. They did best Ankeny earlier this season, 3 to 2. Here's a shot that Brown is able to leg out. Now the deep blast, which will go wide left by Cambry Mason. It was a good clearance by Brown, especially especially with Peterson lingering just in behind her. So, yeah, it was a good clearance. And Ankeny Centennial able to sub in. Coming in is Jillian the thing. And now it appears we're going to have our first water break of the day. 1957 to play here in the first half. We've had a lot of sparks, and the heat has been on the keepers today. 2-1 Centennial with the lead. The curious. Wow. The adventurous. Oh. Ah. 
those venturing out for the first time. And those who've never lost our sense of wonder. Have you seen this? We are the hungry. The strong. I must be the greatest. The joyful. A happy little cloud. We believe there is always more we can uncover. More we can explore. We believe in the capacity for goodness. And the potential for greatness. The torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. PBS. 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 member of an organization or part of a school looking for engaging free resources for kids? Our highly trained staff, many former educators, are ready to come meet your educational needs at no charge. IPTV participates in STEM festivals and school events, provides professional development to teachers, and educational opportunities to families and informal educators. Contact Educational Services to find out how IPTV can support learners of all ages. Beer isn't the only thing barley has going for it. I'm Charity Nebbe. On the next Iowa Ingredient, we'll travel to eastern Iowa to see how one farmer harvests this ancient grain. And then Chef Eric Johnson will stop by the studio kitchen to prepare some hearty recipes using barley. All that and more on the next Iowa Ingredient. Join Charity Nebbe Thursday evening at 6.30 or Saturday morning at 11.30. This Month in Passport, your on-demand library of the best of PBS. A year is a long time to wait before we meet again. Why do you never listen to anything I say, Lord? Because I want what's best for you. He's the science teacher we all wish we had. Science! Art can be seen as so foundational to civilization, an expression of humanity. These and other shows are available with Passport. Become a member of this PBS station, sign in, and start streaming today. Join the conversation online with Iowa Public Television. Follow us on Twitter. Connect with us on all our social networks. 2-1, Centennial with the lead on Ankeny as we're at the water break here in the first half. Jags able to get it done after falling down by a goal as we take a look back at how we got here. And it was quite impressive with Ankeny getting the game's first goal, but then the penalty, and Gray able to pound it home with the penalty kick. Tied it up at one apiece. Then Centennial, a few moments later, comes marching back. Gray involved in the play as she's had a huge first half, able to assist Geiger to give the Jaguars their first lead of this game. What a battle here so far we've had between Centennial and Ankeny. A free kick coming up for the Jags out in front of their own net. By the way, severe weather here in the state of Iowa, up into northern Iowa. A tornado warning has been issued for just west of Mason City. Thoughts for those of you in that area to take cover. Of course, it is that time of the year. Weather here in Des Moines expected to be held off until after the conclusion of this game and maybe on into early evening. You're supposed to be doing the weather, though, Justin. <laughs> Is my name Ed Wilson? <laughs> Very close. Here we go. A little free ball up top. Lopez from out from the net will just kick it away. And it will be a throw in from deep in the corner. Wow, Marissa Lopez kind of living on the edge there, trying to go after that free ball. Left the net wide open, but lives to tell about it here. As now it'll be a clear out for Centennial. A little foot race, 50-50 to the ball. There's Smith, cannot corral it. Now the Hawkettes will try to attack. And could not. Just managed the pulse for her sideline there. We'll only see one change in shape. Um, Centennial have kept it the same. 
But the whole cats now have well look like they've gone to a 442. Oh, sorry, 433. They need to be disciplined. Shire will hold it in here on the near side. Now towards the middle, left open, just had it deflected away. Hawkett's trying to find it deep. Leg involved in traffic and taken away by Eubin. And the Hawkett's again cleared away with Adamson. This is where they need to take advantage, though, of the wind at their back. Centennial has fended off some challenges here, and their midfielders doing the job clogging up the middle. Yeah, they've got the matchup in the midfield, three versus three. Um, it's evenly, I think, right now at this point, it, it's pretty even. Uh, where the danger is for, for Centen Centennial is out wide with Geiger and Gray. Gray, Gray playing on the far left and Geiger on the right. But Geiger has this habit of making inverted runs, which Ho the Hoquettes need to watch, as she proved when she scored the goal. Gutting it back into the game for Smith at the forward position. Now Ankeny trying to run it deep, and they get it! Are you kidding me? This one's tied! What a goal by Alexis Leg! Somehow she was able to put her left foot on it and bury it with a defender right on her in Brown. What a fantastic goal. Coming, the ball came across her body. She timed her movements perfectly on the volley, left foot. Dipped it over the keeper. No swerve, just dipped under the crossbar. Fantastic stuff from leg. Alexis, who's had a huge season, now over 75 points on the year. Connecting on her 34th goal of the year. Tied up at two. These two teams are really laying it out on the line. As Leg able to connect on the goal to tie it up at two. Back and forth, seesaw battle. What more could you ask for in a state championship game? The ball in from Mason was... Here's another look at it, this time from the view of the goalie. Oh, just absolutely fantastic. Just eluding the fingertips of the goalkeeper, Lopez. But it was the initial pass that was played in and delivered by Mason was perfectly pinpointed. It's now leg with a goal and an assist today. Again, tied at two. Inside of 17 to play. Ankeny will run it along the near sideline with Peterson. A terrific battle for the ball. And now the Hawkeyes will throw it in. Four calls in the first half so far, with close to 16 minutes to go. I mean, it's been end to end. And this one out of bounds. So the Hawkettes. Geeker will give it a thrill. And now Centennial. Here's we. And deep on into the corner. Tied at two, 15.30 to play here in the first half. Centennial, who's been in a lot of competitive games this year, fell down by a goal, then took a goal lead only to see Ankeny come back to tie it up here. Charlie, 
There's so much ability in these two sides, BJ. Like I said earlier, it can go anyway. Now a corner kick coming up. We with the blast with the right foot left it up. This is going to be headed out. Now we another blast will set it up towards the net, and this is going to be bolted again. A goal for Olivia Brown. One, what a fantastic delivery into the box. As we have a look at this, what a brilliant delivery by we and Brown coming in. Lap like a salmon, can you believe it? Into the bottom corner. That's an absolutely fantastic goal. Not even a top-notch goalkeeper is going to save that. 3-2 Centennial back out in front. Brown picking up her fourth goal of the year. So Centennial back out in front again. However, you have to question the marking on the far post. Can the Hawkeyes answer here? As this is knocked out and a corner kick will be coming up here for Ankeny. Good Their opportunity. Good job there by Whitaker. Just forcing the corner, driving down the left-hand side of the field into the box. Under pressure from two players. This will be Shire. Midfielder with five assists this year. Finding her spot. Towards the net. The header left empty. Now foot race towards the ball. They'll leave it out in open space to Shire, who'll blast it towards the middle. And the Hawkeyes will try to track it down with Adamson. Now they play it back. Well, using the win, and this will be an easy one for Lopez to roll it on in. So Ankeny with an opportunity to answer. Are you surprised about the offense we've seen here? These two teams know each other rather well. But five goals so far here in the first half. I'll be totally honest with you. Yes, I am. I'm, t I'm totally surprised because uh, both of them actually defend very well as the whole catch looked to break into the box picked up by Eubin. I mean, both of them shape up. I mean, we're at 3-2 already, and that was the final score of the last encounter that they both faced when they both faced each other. Centennial won their opening round game 7-0 over Abraham Lincoln. Ankeny beat Lenmar 5-1 in the semifinals. It was Centennial. Squeaking out a victory over Waukee 2-0. Speaking of squeakers, how about this? Ankeny beat Valley 2-1, went 3-0 on penalty kicks to win that game yesterday. And as this game goes on, it'll be interesting to see, you know, obviously with the Hawkeyes going into overtime as the ball comes across. But going into overtime, the legs and... Are they going to last? I mean, that extra 20 minutes and uh, in the heat yesterday and the recovery time is 24 hours, to be honest with you. It's going to pay its toll. See if that's a factor later on. Right now, it's not. Here's Brown. Now Leg. Leg winning the race to the ball. And here she is again, leg with already a goal, and this blast goes wide right. Boy, what a spot by leg. Legs working hard there, just dropping into the hole, trying to create something. Bennett's moved out to the left-hand side here for the Hawks. I've noticed Cookie out to the right. Cooker, sorry, out to the right-hand side. So, just, just some change in positioning. Now down the field, the far side. This one going to be turned around by Ankeny for the moment. 
Centennial trying to drive it on deep. With good spacing by the Hawkeyes. As now Centennial will throw it in from the near sideline. This is Wee. Now the blast from up top, an opportunity here. Boy, trying to measure it was Jensen. Now with the shot, and this goes high and wide. Surprised she had that much time to drive it on in deep into the zone. Yeah, Lizzie Johnson actually did well there to, to beat two defenders going left and right. But she was just leaning slightly and a little bit off balance, and that's why the ball went over the bar. Now Frederick will play it out from net. Get it back up. Did not get a good foot into it as it was disrupted by Wood. And it looks like we're going to have a penalty called against Ankeny. So Centennial with a free kick. Right inside the offensive zone. So we will send it on deep. Boy, and we'll be headed out. Boy, again, another tough play defensively for the Hawkeyes. A very good clearance. Uh, I think it's Adamson that got rid of that ball, but the fact that it went straight to one of her players in the midfield was, uh, it shows something. Now Lopez holding it. Nearing the eight minute mark to go in the first half. Feels like we've played more than a game here so far. The goals that are up on the board, 3-2 in favor of Centennial. Yeah, it definitely has as we tries to deliver a diagonal. It's been tied twice. Each team has had a lead. Centennial has led it twice now. Now Mackey. Up top with Cooker. Cooker, excuse me. Whitaker out there looking to try and create something as well. Right, and over to Brown, who will head it back out. Now Whitaker again to the middle to leg. When Centennial at the right spot at the right moment. I want to remind you, coming up at the half, we'll be talking with both coaches, gaining their insight as to what happened in the first half and what's setting up for the second half. And now the official talking things over with Centennial's Naomi Lopez. Her and her sister have both spent time in the net. Marissa in the net today. Now here's a blast from up top, and it's going to be just knocked in the hook. Oh, the goal is open, and Lopez makes a fantastic play. That's what you call standing on your head and using everything that you've got to keep it out. That's got to be a confidence builder, no question. Absolutely. The delivery from Whitaker was uh, <clears throat> pinpoint onto the crossbar, but Lopez did really well to recover and get on top of the ball. What a flurry of activity right there in front of the net. And the Hawks will force a throw in here. Let's take a look at this activity here. Whitaker with a deep blast. Lopez just reaches high enough. It deflects it off of the top bar. Then Leg whipped it. And Lopez was able just to hold that in. Lopez did. She was brave there, actually, to get her body in the way as leg came in on the rebound. Here's Wee. Good footwork. 
was still from the corner, trying to center, and it's body blocked out, so we'll have a corner kick coming up here for Centennial. They've scored on this play before, albeit off of a rebound. That was good cover from Osborne, forcing the ball out for a corner. Terrific crowd stretched all the way out. Here's Wee with the corner, and this is going to go wide. And just went on top of the net. Didn't manage to whip her foot around that ball to swing it out. So back at it here again, 3-2, as Frederick will lob it ahead. There's Gray, who's had a huge first half. Stemming the tide on this one, keeping it tight. Gray off into the corner now. This shot goes wide left. And it will be a free kick out in front of the net. You give Gray that much oh. space. She will punish you. She'll turn and run at you. That was really good recovery run by uh, Riley Whitaker and their teammates at club. And then the cover coming across from Osborne, which forced it out for a corner. That did deflect off of a Hawkett. So Megan Gray will have a corner kick coming up to the far sideline. See so your right leg. That big brace on it hasn't affected her at all today. Here's the law off the corner kick. It's going to be up and it's going to be in and off the post. Somehow Shire's able to blast it away and it stayed out of the net and passed, did not get past the line. Good defending by Shire. Uber, Uben and uh, Brown coming in on the far post are so dangerous. You've got to make sure you're marking them tight. But they're both very, very dangerous as you see that goal oh. scramble. I think it might have crossed. I think you're right. I think the ball went completely across. We'll have to take a look at that again when we have a moment. That could be a talking point. Would have been a huge goal. But Frederick. Able to benefit off of that. Now trying to direct traffic. So 3-2 stellar score with 3-10 to play in the first half. Lizzie Johnson at the ready, and you see the hop. Tries to go far left, the header up. It's off into the corner, and Frederick will haul it on in. So let's take a look. We'll slow it down. Did the ball cross the goal line? That's all it has to do is completely go over, and right there, it might have been toeing the line. It's really, really tight. The whole ball has to cross the line. That was tight. I don't think anybody could have seen that. The officials, I mean, now that you have TV re review at the top level. 3-2, still our score with 2.23 to go in the first half. It'll tangle up, and this one will go to Ankeny. You can tell that the play has slowed down a little bit from what we saw early on in the game. However, when each team gets it deep inside the zone, it's like they hit another gear. Yes, they do. I mean, there's that, that just slight burst of energy. You know, obviously they're going to get tired of moving, just coming towards the end of the first half. But there they just seems to be that little boost in energy as, as Lopez looks to cross the ball. But we'll see as we go further on in the game. I mean, as the heat comes in and the fit and, and the humidity, I mean, it's, it, the players will start to get tired, and that's why you'll see lots of rotations in off the bench. Another corner kick with 90 seconds to play in the half. Olivia Wee. This time gets one towards the middle. Brown just missed it, the header. And now the deep boot. Up top will go wide of the net. And let's see how they ruled it. It's not, it's going to be out on Centennial. Carly Jensen was putting pressure on Bennett there. Bennett did really well to shield the ball. So 
So I think back to that missed opportunity in which we thought the ball might have crossed the line entirely. The ball has to go past the line. All of it has to go, not just a little. We know some of it was across the line, but was it all completely across the line? It was a close call, that's for sure. It was difficult for us to see, but it, it did look, look like the whole ball crossed the line. Could be a huge factor later on. I think they're going to slow this down. 15 seconds to go into the half. One more roll here with 10 seconds to play in the half. Centennial with a 3-2 lead. We've had everything, some lead changes, some ties. And the Jags putting it up on the board with goals from Gray, Geiger, and Brown. Bennett and Leg scoring for Ankeny. What a first half between the two. So they have been able to get it done. And now Dan Birch, Ankeny's head coach, making his way to midfield to visit with us here in the first half. And what a first half it was. Ankeny and Centennial and coach. What an explosion there in the first half by your team and Centennial. What a championship game. Uh, what's your assessment of the first half so far? It's a battle, you know, and we knew that going into it. I mean, to have five goals in the first half, the thing's probably going to end with about 25 goals if it keeps going the rate it is. And we just got to stay healthy, keep our legs underneath us, stay confident, and we expect it. It's, it's No one's going to kind of sneak out of this um, early on. Let's just keep going. Have fun. Enjoy the moment. Coach Birch, uh, Megan Gray has been causing some problems wide on the left. She's uh, been allowed a lot of space. How are you going to nullify that? you, you got to just contain her. You can't be poking at a player like that. She's smart. She loves spacing behind her with that quick first uh, explosive touch that she's got. We've asked the girls, hey, contain her. If she whips the ball in, allow our outside backs to buy times in for our center backs to be able to defend everything centrally. Well, Coach, we thank you for your time and good luck in the second half. Thank you, guys. That's Ankeny's head coach, Dan Birch, joining us here as we're at the half. Centennial with a 3-2 lead over Ankeny. And you're watching the Class 3A state championship game here on Iowa Public Television. Coming up on this episode of Iowa Outdoors. All right, let's do all in. We invited the sixth graders out to try out these Voyager canoes. Get them paddling, learn a skill, you know, to enjoy the outdoors. These kids live here by the river. You know, the water can be powerful, and we just want to make sure that they're safe and they're aware um, of how to be safe on the water. Enjoy Iowa Outdoors, Wednesday evening at 6.30. With a love of British blues, inspired by pioneering guitarists, Joe Bonamassa pays tribute to the legends of British blues in a stunning concert. Enjoy a British blues explosion. 7 o'clock Wednesday evening. On Civilizations, from ancient scrolls in China, to the majesty of the American West. Landscapes help define who we are and who we'd like to be. There were passionate statements about how humanity could be redeemed through the encounter with nature. Paradise on Earth, on Civilizations. Tuesday evening at 7 on Iowa Public Television. Explore your community with Member Card as your guide. When you make a qualifying gift to this PBS station, you'll receive our member card, which entitles you to savings at restaurants, cultural and family attractions, bed and breakfast, wineries, even sports, golfing, and lodging in your area. Use the card a few times and it pays for itself. The member card app will help you explore all the benefits wherever you are. Learn more at IPTV.org or call 800-779-7000 and let the fun and savings begin. Hi, 
I'm Charity Nebbe, host of Iowa Ingredient. More and more viewers are becoming sustaining members to support Iowa Public Television because it's easy and hassle-free. You simply choose an amount to give each month through your bank account or through your credit card, and you're set. It's a great way to support the shows you love month after month. You can give online or you can call 800-728-2828. Thank you so much. Do you Snapchat? So does IPTV. Add Iowa Public TV or snap our code. Get live peeks at our productions as they happen in real time. See exclusive behind the scenes content. Connect with all our social networks by visiting IPTV.org slash social. 3-2 Centennial with a lead on Ankeny. What a fireworks display we've had in this first half as both Centennial and Ankeny have had a lead in this one. Right now it's the Jaguars out in front, 3-2. to two. We've got the second half coming your way here in mere moments, so stay tuned for the conclusion of this one. It's a good one. Ankeny Centennial and Ankeny, your Class 3A state championship right here on statewide Iowa Public Television. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. We are the curious. Wow! <laughs> the adventurous. Oh! Those venturing out for the first time. <laughs> and those who've never lost our sense of wonder. Whoa! Are you seeing this? <laughs> we are the hungry. <laughs> the strong. I must be the greatest! The joyful. A happy little cloud. We believe there is always more we can uncover. More we can explore. We believe in the capacity for goodness. And the potential for greatness. The torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. PBS. 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 member of an organization or part of a school looking for engaging free resources for kids? Our highly trained staff, many former educators, are ready to come meet your educational needs at no charge. IPTV participates in STEM festivals and school events, provides professional development to teachers, and educational opportunities to families and informal educators. Contact Educational Services to find out how IPTV can support learners of all ages. Beer isn't the only thing barley has going for it. I'm Charity Nebbe. On the next Iowa Ingredient, we'll travel to eastern Iowa to see how one farmer harvests this ancient grain. And then Chef Eric Johnson will stop by the studio kitchen to prepare some hearty recipes using barley. All that and more on the next Iowa Ingredient. Join Charity Nebbe Thursday evening at 6.30 or Saturday morning at 11.30. This month in Passport, your on-demand library of the best of PBS. A year is a long time to wait before we meet again. Why do you never listen to anything I say, Lord? Because I want what's best for you. He's the science teacher we all wish we had. Science! Art can be seen as so foundational to civilization, an expression of humanity. These and other shows are available with Passport. Become a member of this PBS station, sign in, and start streaming today. Join the conversation online with Iowa Public Television. Follow us on Twitter. Connect with us on all our social networks. Three, two, Centennial with the lead on Ankeny as we've got 40 more minutes of soccer to be played here, and I'm expecting a lot the way that these two have really set the tone. Definitely, BJ. I'm expecting more goals this second half, uh, especially with Hawkettes coming out. I think they're going to apply a little more pressure now to get back into this game. Let's take a look at the first half highlights up to this point. There are a lot. Both teams were able to strike it down the field as we take a look at what they're able to accomplish as Ankeny answered back. Leg able to push a goal across. And then, of course, other goals coming 
for Gray and Geiger and Brown for Ankeny Centennial. And there's one right in the middle for Geiger. As things have been popping right towards the middle of the net. And of course, it was a close call. Was it a goal? Was it a goal? Just a few moments before the end of the first half. But nonetheless, as we take a look at the statistics here in the first half, we see Ankeny has outshot Centennial 9-8. Shots on goal though at 5-4 in favor of the Jags. And of course the corner kicks Centennial with 4-1 for Ankeny. Now it's time to be joined by Centennial's head coach Chris Allen. Coach, you won a championship here a few years ago in prime position right now with a goal lead. How do you feel? about uh, how your team played in the first half. I think there's a lot of fight out there from our team in that first half. Uh, they, they've really uh, put it in together, and when it got down, we, we battled right back into it using our game plan, uh, executing. I think it's clear that we're trying to generate some corners out there and take advantage of uh, Olivia Brown's uh, tenacity on those. Coach Allen, uh, you're three, two up right now. Obviously, you're in, a, you're in prime position to win the game. Are you gonna look, up, look to shape up behind the ball, or are you gonna still go for it? Yeah, no, we'll uh, take advantage of when things open up, but at the same time, we, we don't want to be a sponge and constantly absorb. You know, Ankeny has the ability to shoot from beyond the 18. Uh, as you see, they hit a crossbar earlier, and so we can't, we can't just sit back and absorb everything. Uh, but we'll definitely uh, put, put defensive first in the priority with some of our uh, fullbacks and things like that. Thanks, Coach, and good luck here in the second half. All right, thank you. That's Chris Allen, the head coach for Ankeny Centennial. As we're about ready to get the late half underway, how much energy do these two teams have? They really used a lot in that first half, no question. And uh, a state championship on the line and really bragging rights within the city limits of Ankeny. With Justin Forster, BJ Shaven, the rest of our crew here at Iowa Public Television, bringing you all three state soccer championships. 1A title went to Davenport Assumption earlier today, 8-0 over Bishop Heelan. The thriller in 2A as Lewis Central was able to outlast Waverly Shell Rock 1-0. And now here in the Class 3A title game, a 3-2 lead for Centennial. Well, I see uh, Ankeny Hawkeyes have kept the shape the same. Uh, three at the back. Whitaker is the lone center back and they're playing Osborne in front as a holding midfielder. Alongside, alongside her is Kate Schaefer. So obviously they're looking to play two strong holding midfielders there to, just to stop the penetration of uh, and the pass going into the Centennial center forward. Here's Gray with a blast. And this one will go out. So a free kick out in front of the net. Coming up for Frederick. Wait, that early stage here and it is very early but a minute in it seems like each team was trying to measure one another yes they were and I think I think they were just, apart from measuring just trying to feel each other out uh, as the shot comes in uh, fairly weak um, but trying to feel each other out you know moving forward and waiting for the little mistakes and the gaps to open up so that they can try and slip the the passes in and that's kind of what happened in the first half I think they'll be a little bit, a little more cautious this second half, to be honest with you. This one played down the field for the Hawkeyes and Roweeder. The big blast from up top. The wind is up and it carries too far. Boy, Mallory really put her foot into it. And going into the wind, you might have that advantage where the ball's just going to hold in the wind and maybe just dip him over the goalkeeper's head. Midfielder with four goals this season. Now back into it as they try to drive it to Centennial. Each team able to post a number of shutouts. And Centennial. You might say it would be the better defender team stat wise coming into the game but gave up two goals early on and in fact gave up the lead goal to Ankeny they did answer back with Gray to tie it up at one and then Centennial had a 2-1 lead then leg with a blast from right at the top of the point to tie it up at two right now the deciding goal coming off of the head of Olivia Brown as Olivia Wee Passed it in as after a rebound or a corner kick and it was bobbled out. And Brown had another chance at it and was able to push it through. That's the difference so far in this one. 3-2 our score. 
Ankeny trying to stretch it out. The header from leg will be easily played by Lopez. Earlier you mentioned about the Centennial back line. I mean, they are very strong with Wyckoff, Brown, Uben, and Wee. But in front of them, you've got Freddie and Johnson, who are very good holding midfielders that play a six and an eight role on rotation. So if one goes, the other one stays, and vice versa. You have to wonder, too, you take a little bit of a break, and sometimes what you don't want is a break out of there because of the adrenaline is flowing. Now they play give and go along the near sideline, little cat and mouse. As Adamson runs up the near sideline. Now Centennial need to shape it up so that if the ball's played out of the back by the whole catch that they can force it into the middle, just their body shape getting around the ball. Otherwise, yes, they will play cat and mouse. Yeah, we with the steal and trying to run it ahead. Well, we used to call it doggies, just <laughs> running back and forth. Almost really trying to make them burn off some energy. We use toss in. To Geiger from the corner. See if she can bend it around. No striker there, and it'll be headed back out. Got a corner kick here coming up. It's actually a very good delivery. Geiger turning nice and sharp, delivered. Lopez was coming on the far post, but it was easy taken care of by the Hawkeyes. So the corner kick coming up for Centennial and Megan Gray. Jags with another opportunity here. Here's Gray. This one bending towards the net and will be headed back out. Gray will pick it up off the rebound. Now tries to drive it now with the sidekick, but this one just went wide left. A little too much foot as she chucked it towards the net. Very good first touch as she burst into the box, into the 18-yard box, but just slightly off balance when she, just, when she struck the ball. Had the space. Well, well read challenge there by Freddie stepping in, winning the ball in front of Cooker. Gray again. And with the wedge shot towards the middle, directed back out. Making he two forward, and now they find leg. Trying to put it back down on the other end. There's Cooker. This game has really slowed down <laughs> since the start of the second half. The first, half. the first half started off at a blistering pace. You're right, it slowed down, but I expect it to pick up later on in the game, especially if the score is still the same. Hawkett's trying to challenge, and this one directed back out by Wee. Freddie, rather. Jensen from the far sideline will send it deep. Oh, great steal by Geiger. Her shot towards the middle and will be directed right back out. Only two white jerseys deep inside that box on that drive. And now this will be easily played by Frederick. Like they're they've switched dials at the wind. Hawkett's kicking against it. I'm trying to play it forward. Eight minutes into the second half. In that first half, Ankeny had outshot Centennial nine to eight. We've had a bevy of activity, but we heard it from the Hawkett's head coach, Dan Birch. He said, can't play at that pace. 
<laughs> right, exactly. And you can see it going into the wind, the Hawkettes are trying to play the ball and build it on the ground, trying to pass through the lines and trying to find those passing lines where the game can change a little bit now for Centennial where, yeah, they like to play football on the ground and build, but they might look a little more direct as well. Cooker with a shot. This one's going to go high and wide over the net. Still a one goal game. Taking a touch with the outside of her foot, getting it onto her favored right foot. And we got a sub into the game. Kenzie Langstrat will come into the game now for Centennial. Uh, she'll spell Jensen. view of the centennial tent <laughs> somehow the Jags were able to come away with it see the whole cats are still trying to be very patient as Whitaker drives forward that one blocked back out. What a great block from uh, Olivia Brown. Brown, no question, having a game to remember, not only defensively, but putting a goal up on the board that so far was able to stem the tide and gave her team the lead. Centennial on the prowl here. Geiger over on that far side will center it. This one played up and will be knocked out by Ankeny. Again, another great delivery from Geiger. I feel like if uh, Langstrad would have hit that first time, it would have been a better chance. Taking the touch, she was closed down too quickly. She needed a split second on that. Got necked over to the near side here to Wood. Wood will center this one, but it's blocked out. And we have a whistle, penalty called here against Centennial. So each team trying to grab some energy here as we're just over 10 minutes into the late half. Osborne will play it back. Now to leg. It was a lovely first time pass around the corner from Shire into leg. Moving back deep here to the near side. And the Hawkettes will intercept with Adamson. And he's starting to move their midfielders up. They still have three back deep. Now trying to stretch it with Geiger. What jets and this one is going to roll and it will go out. Forces a corner. Yeah, and corner kick. Another good run by Geiger. Breaking loose down the far right hand side. Eluding the two defenders that were closing it down. Coming into the game for Ankeny is going to be Taylor Peterson. Also in for Centennial is going to be Jillian Nathang and Megan Gray. We from the far side, this one's going to be up and wide right. Well, the win must have been a factor on the ball. Still keeping our score at three to two. And Ankeny back into the game with Ellie Gretz. Junior midfielder will come in for Olivia Shire. The Hawkettes need to try and move the ball a little more quickly so they can break the lines. 
Centennial really, really good at recovering. So the speed of actions need to improve. Like playing the ball onto the front foot. Looking to hit the strikers very quickly. As you can see, they get closed down. Yeah, we with the steal. Look at we go, Olivia We with the drive, and this one off of the ground, defended well, and we will try to pound it back in with her head, and a penalty will be called against We. Boy, a great couple of moments there from Olivia We. That was a great run from her. She carried on her run, just showing some tenacious ability with the challenge in the box. Unfortunately, giving away a free kick. Giving up some energy, though. You're late turning it on at the right time. Here's Adamson. Of course. Ankeny playing an overtime game that went all the way to penalty kicks against Valley. They were able to outlast the Tigers, of course, to advance here. When, went at 3-0 on penalty kicks. And took the score at 2-1. Centennial winner in regulation, 2-0 over Waukee. And this one will go deep as Adamson will track it on down. Don't keep it in play with Peterson. Cooker. And Lopez will get involved. Over to Brown. Well, each team playing keep away here late. Not much happening downfield. Have there been what sort of adjustments have been made, Justin? Well, just looking at the way they're playing, right? I mean, there's no real change in the system. I'd like to see maybe a change with Hawkettes after the water break. They probably need to push an extra player forward. They're really struggling with the just two against the back four, and even they three five two. But if you know they can go three four three, they've kept three at the back now. But just push an extra player forward up on the line, just to cause more problems. And if they press two up against the two center backs, Ubin and Brown, it, it could cause a difference. However, they still need to take care of this back here with the back three. Adamson in back. They did move the ball down deep, but again, Centennial very strong defensively here in the late half. Cramming a lot of people back late. First all city showdown, Centennial and Ankeny came out with some fireworks in the late half here. Both teams' defenses have been clamping down just like that with Adamson. Adamson's been good so far. And this one will go out. And we'll have some subs come into the game. Nearing our water break here in the late half. Lizzie Johnson will re-enter the game for Ankeny Centennial, who's had a huge and been involved in a lot of plays here in this one. It's a good move. Lily Johnson's a good player. So just add a little bit in there from an ability standpoint. Lopez will pick up and kick. Make that a throw out to the wing. Geiger trying to lead it on down deep to Longstrot. And Frederick will boot it back out. On the near sideline. What's nice about these, these two teams is they both like to play out of the back and keep possession. But the more centennial keep possession is going to be difficult for the Hawkettes because then they'll be changing, chasing the ball and the legs will get tired. 
And we have a whistle. Penalty going to be called here against Centennial. So here's an opportunity for Ankeny. Actually in a very, very good position here. They move it back a little bit. This will be leg. I beg your pardon. Well, the defender, Riley Whitaker. Riley Whitaker will come up. Look to put it in play. You see the wall in front of her. View from the back. Here's Whitaker. Tries to go up, and this one's going to be hauled in by Lopez, who played it perfectly. Good vision out in front. Yeah, it went straight into Lopez's hands. Riley Whitaker maybe should have come around the ball a little more just to whip it away from her in the opposite corner. Now Geiger leading the break, but quickly nullified there by Osborne. Good starting position by Osborne, just covering the space, cutting out the passing lanes. Again, right near the halfway point here of the late half. Ankeny again trying to figure out Centennial defensively here. And this one will go out. We're going to say it's off of Ankeny. And Centennial will get the possession back. As we walk to the ball just to kill some time. Trying to strike it deep. Getting a lot of play here in midfield in the late half. Back here to the near side. And her missed by Peterson. Now Geiger. And so it'll be a throw in along the near sideline for Ankeny. And it looks like we're going to have a stoppage in play. We're just inside of the halfway point. Ankeny Centennial in position to win their second state title. Trying to fend off their crosstown rival, Ankeny. 3-2 our score as we're at the water break on Iowa Public Television. Coming up on this episode of Iowa Outdoors. All right, let's do all in. We invited the sixth graders out to try out these Voyager canoes. Get them paddling, learn a skill, you know, to enjoy the outdoors. These kids live here by the river. You know, the water can be powerful, and we just want to make sure that they're safe and they're aware um, of how to be safe on the water. Enjoy Iowa Outdoors, Wednesday evening at 6.30. With a love of British blues, inspired by pioneering guitarists, Joe Bonamassa. Pays tribute to the legends of British blues in a stunning concert. Like lost him, my poor Enjoy a British blues explosion. 7 o'clock Wednesday evening. On civilizations from ancient scrolls in China to the majesty of the American West. Landscapes help define who we are and who we'd like to be. There were passionate statements about how humanity could be redeemed through the encounter with nature. Paradise on Earth, on Civilizations. Tuesday evening at 7 on Iowa Public Television. Explore your community with Member Card as your guide. When you make a qualifying gift to this PBS station, you'll receive our member card, which entitles you to savings at restaurants, cultural and family attractions, bed and breakfast, wineries, even sports, golfing, and lodging in your area. Use the card a few times and it pays for itself. The member card app will help you explore all the benefits wherever you are. Learn more at iptv.org 
or call 800-779-7000 and let the fun and savings begin. I'm Charity Nebbe, host of Iowa Ingredient. More and more viewers are becoming sustaining members to support Iowa Public Television because it's easy and hassle-free. You simply choose an amount to give each month through your bank account or through your credit card, and you're set. It's a great way to support the shows you love month after month. You can give online, or you can call 800-728-2828. Thank you so much. Do you use Snapchat? So does IPTV. Add Iowa Public TV or snap our code. Get live peeks at our productions as they happen in real time. See exclusive behind the scenes content. Connect with all our social networks by visiting IPTV.org slash social. 3-2 our scores. We've got 1928 to play. In this one between Centennial and Ankeny, here from the County Soccer Park on Iowa Public Television. You know, the first half, very explosive. Had all five goals there. To start the second half, both teams, it seemed like, were kind of trying to rest up or conserve some energy. Expecting an all blitz down the last 20 here. I would expect something from Ankeny Hawkeyes. Maybe a change in the shape. Maybe pushing an extra player forward. They need to. If they don't, and the score stays the same, same they're not going to get the result. So they really need to change something. I mean, the game in the second half has been very slow. Again, both teams uh, feeling each other out, but I, I just think the weather's had a toll and we're on day three right now. One of the starters, forwards, back into the game. Shire for Ankeny. Coming out of that water break. So here's Geiger. And a lot of times when you push it too hard, there could be some mistakes. Langstrott will try to blitz it down in. And it's actually, it's going to go out, and it will belong to Ankeny. Longstraw wanted to get a corner, but could not convince the referee, Jennifer Dunn, today. Very good defending by Osborne as well, just to get across Langstrad, forcing it out to for, for a goal kick. I must say, the officiating has been good today. Quite a crew, each of the three games. All female. First time we've seen that here at the Girls State Soccer Championships. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Just goes to show in the state of Iowa, there's, there's more female staff coming through, officiating games. That you can do it. We'll take a look at this. Gray out on the wing. We're trying to clip it back towards the middle, and this one's just stopped at the line. Are you kidding me? That might be some energy that Ankeny could use with that stop by Frederick. Great work by Gray on the right, but what an unbelievable save by Frederick. Not enough power on the shot, but she still had to stretch out and save that ball. Yeah, and Thang put her foot on it. Able to knock it down was Frederick. Nathang did really well to get into a good position. Just dropped off a little bit deep to the six-yard box just to get away from the defender. Didn't get enough power on the shot, though. Now here's Leg. Trying to dish it off now with a lot of room out front. Leg here to the near side. Trying to find her teammate, Cooker. And a penalty called against Ankeny. As you look at the ball coming in, Nathan did really well just to drop into the hole. But what a great save by Frederick. Now another foot race to the ball. Longstrock going to... Boy, body, and that, there will be a whistle here. And a yellow card will be issued against Langstrott. Again, Osborne coming coming across to cover that. Again, it's the same battle between Osborne and Langstrott. So Miranda Wood will come into the game. Once you receive a yellow card, you're quickly ushered out. Good idea. 
Now well, back into play here for the Hawkettes. Trying to figure some offense out here, down by a goal. They go to the far side of the field, that's Bennett. Out of the middle, of the leg. Swims to the side, trying to go to Bennett. Offside call there. I tell you what, the Hawkettes are really Ankeny, the state's leading or top scoring team in all of Class 3A. Needing to figure out how to score a goal here against Centennial down the stretch with 15.34 to go. Osborne came across and cleared that ball across the body with a right foot. Might have been a better option with a left. Could have kept it in play. Kept in by the Hawkettes. Here's Schaefer. I'll play back. We'll be a throw in here for Ankeny. Defense, defense, defense is what we've had here in the second half. The two combined in the first half to have 17 shots. And Centennial had a 3-2 lead at intermission. The difference, Brown, a header from a pass from Wee at the 26-minute mark. And things have slowed down, or slowed down, excuse me. As the Hawkettes are trying to find something, another gear, perhaps. Freddie and Johnson are doing a really good job blocking the passing lanes so the Hawkettes can't get that ball into, into leg. I see they've pushed Whitaker up front now, so she's playing a little bit higher, linking up. Now from the corner, though, trying to center it and just can't get it out in front of the net. Legs dropped into the midfield, possibly playing in a number 10 role. So Shire will check out. Mallory Roweeder will come back in. And Centennial with some subs coming into Geiger. Also returning to the game is Carly Jensen, the sophomore midfielder. Both teams with excellent depth. As this game moves on to its latter stages. With 13 minutes to play. Now there's so much depth within these two squads coming off the bench. Not just that, moving forward in future years. I mean, there's so many kids coming through the program up in Ankeny, both schools. And this will stay with Centennial. Now they spin it off. Here's Whitaker. Lost it to Brown. As it stands now, Olivia Brown with a game winning goal if this score holds. Freddie did really well cutting off that passing lane, winning the ball off Whitaker in that situation. Trying to find some energy here. 
Create some offense here down the stretch as they try to penetrate deep. Here's Cooker. Trying to measure up her defender, Cooker. Well, gave up the ball and wisely played there by Centennial. Some tired legs out there, you can tell. As you get tired, you're going to make technical errors. You're not going to pass the ball as strong as what you would do. So the weight of the pass was a little bit soft there from Cooker. Just to put, put a little more on it. And this shot going to be hauled in by Lopez. It's really their best look here in the late half. Centennial last won the championship two years ago in 2016. Their second overall final. Fourth state appearance. And for Ankeny, ninth state appearance. Fifth finals. And they have three titles to show for it. Of course, winning the 2A title back in 2015. So Centennial will throw it in here from the near sideline. This is Carly Jensen. A little extra shove. <laughs> Miranda Wood saying, get out of here. They're making the change. Wood's coming off. Looks like Gray's coming back in. Nathan's going off, and Lopez comes back into the game. All for the state championship in Class 3A. This is how the game ended the first time these two teams play it. This score at 3-2 in favor of Centennial. As the two go back at it. Now a whistle. And this is going to stay with Centennial. 3-2. That clock continues to wind down. And here's Olivia Wee. But what a terrific crowd here, Justin, for the Class 3A state championship game. Yeah, unbelievable crowd as the delivery comes into the box. This is header that goes up and over the net. But just a shade too high. There's a free header for Lizzie Johnson. Wasn't picked up. Just separating, her, separating herself from the two defenders. Could probably hear a pin drop in Oralaba <laughs> Road right now. The whole of Ankeny down here. Where everybody's home watching the game on TV. This will go to Ankeny. Sage Anderson with a throw in. They'll play it back to Osborne. Here's Gretz. There's definitely some tired legs out there. Not many opportunities for either team in the second half. Uh, I think all the energy was used in the first half, that's for sure. Everyone using their head for a little bit. Osborne needs some cover there. She needs a two outside backs to tuck in. Big battling. Now Gretz tries to pound it towards the middle, and this one deflected away and then quickly booted right back out. So Ankeny will have a throw in here from the near sideline in their offensive zone. Now Cooker to work. Ankeny, Ankeny needs something out of Cooker and Whitaker. They need Bennett possibly to score the first goal. And boy, stepping out from the net. I think uh, 
Marissa Lopez just needed something to do. Really track that ball down late. And using the wind to her advantage, blowing right at their back. Centennial with the advantage of the wind and on the scoreboard with 6.30 to play. Now here comes Centennial. They'll streak it down the field. This is Geiger. Tries to center it. We looked to deliver first time. Wasn't really good. Straight into Whitaker. Whitaker will break midfield. Doing it herself. Whitaker will now give it up. Tries to stretch it out the leg. Leg from the side. Her blast blocked. Good block there by Ubin. Didn't give her enough time and space. Gretz from the side. Now Ankeny will play it back and make Centennial come chase, but it's the Hawkettes that need to strike. Centennial have dropped in very deep there. And it'll be turned over. Now subs coming back into the game. Three for Ankeny. Shire will come back in along with Harrington. And also back in is Kate Schaefer. Centennial will send one back in. And Lexi Gutneck. Inside of five minutes to play. What do these two teams have left in the tank? 3-2 our score. It's going to take something special, EJ, from either one of these teams. I've noticed the shape has changed just a little bit for Centennial. We've got five, five behind the ball versus three. There's a big gap in the hole here. I'll probably look at uh, one of the Centennial players tucking in to cover that. I saw Megan Gray was walking in there as the cross came in. Yeah, free kick coming up. And it's hauled in by Frederick, who tries to outlet it ahead in a hurry. And look at coming in that time it was Gray to disrupt the play. And now we have a whistle. Free kick here coming up for Ankeny. Hawkins realizing the moment inside of four minutes to play in a 3-2 game. Let's take a look at it again. It was a crunching tackle there, actually. But uh, talking about the space as the delivery comes in. Up high, actually redirected out, and we will push it back down the field. What a kick. As it's going to be tracked down, but it will be out. And Centennial will have a throw in from the far sideline. If the Jags are able to put another one up on the board that's just icing on the cake to finish this one with 315 to play. Yeah. The Jags just need to protect the lead now. They don't really need to go forward with three minutes left. Just need to keep it tight in the midfield and cut out all the passing lanes. No question, if anything is broken free, if there's a busted play, it'll be a one-on-one -on -one as Roweeder will come back in. They're trying to find some energy is Ankeny. Got a long way to go to move it down the field. At midfield here. And the steal put out there. So Centennial holding center as this big blast is going to be one hopped right to Frederick. She'll put her foot into it. And now Gray will blast it on down and it'll be locked out of bounds as we're nearing the two minute mark. What sort of adjustments can Ankeny make here to try to get back down the field and put themselves in position? They're going to have to go a little more direct. I mean, go away from your game plan now with the passing and, and 
building through the lines. They have to go direct. They've pushed poor, for, uh, players forward. They just, they've got to get it in there. But they tired, you can tell. So there's a lot of technical errors. And going against the wind. Inside of 90 seconds to play, Centennial trying to win their second state title in soccer. And in really good position to do so, up by a goal as we've got 1.15 to play. And the defense all playing up. They've got two back deep. Absolutely, as you, Uben stepped in there to clear that ball. They're just kicking it down into the corner. Flags now just wasting time. It's all game management now. Inside of a minute to play, you can hear the Jaguar fans on their feet. And a whistle here. And it's being tied up with Centennial's Megan Gray. So quickly put it into play. There you go, off to the corner flag. This is really good game management. Shire looking to go with it. 30 seconds. Can they make a rush down the field? Down to 20. Centennial feeling it. Ankeny trying to make one more desperate push with 20 seconds to play. They cannot cross midfield, and that should do it. Down to 10 seconds. Ankeny Centennial going to win another state championship. Won their last one in 2016, and the Jags have done it. Ankeny Centennial, your Class 3A state champion. <laughs> what a finish to this match. 3-2 was the first half score, and uh, uh, any team could have won this. Honestly, any team could have won it. I mean, it was the Battle of Ankeny. What a game. Ankeny jumped out in front with a goal. Centennial, though, able to answer it back on a penalty kick as they were able to get it into the net to tie it up at one by Gray. Geiger then, four minutes later, with a pass from Gray to take the 2-1 lead. Leg tied it up after the assist from Mason at 2-2. And then the game-winning goal to Olivia Brown. We with the assist, the difference maker in this one, 3-2 Centennial, victorious over Ankeny. What a championship game. Yeah, both teams have so much ability um, in their squads, but, you know, deservedly so. Centennial won it. Um, I thought they had some really good quality going forward. Um, and Olivia Brown with the, the winning goal in the first half. I mean, it was just fantastic all around. Credit to Ankeny Hawkettes. I mean, they're well coached, and I mean, they had chances to get back in the game, but unfortunately, it didn't go their way. Let's go to Tom Florian for the all tournament team announcement. Athletic Union Board of Directors Ron Fodness and Roger Francis Your 2018 Class 3A All-Tournament team is selected by the Iowa High School Soccer Coaches Association. The All-Tournament team coordinator is Jackie Gilo. From Ankeny Centennial, Marissa Lopez. From Ankeny Centennial, Olivia Wee. From Ankeny, Riley Whitaker. From Ankeny, Chloe Cooker.
from Waukee, Allie Williams. From Waukee, Izzy Dammon. From West Des Moines Valley, Mackenzie Olson. From West Des Moines Valley, Megan Nelson. From Ankeny Centennial, Megan Gray. From Ankeny, Alexis Legg. And your Class 3A All-Tournament Team Captain from Ankeny Centennial, Olivia Brown. How about that? The game-winning goal goes to Olivia Brown and now the All-Tournament Team Captain. What a field and what a group of players. Yeah, a group of players with uh, unbelievable ability and potential. Um, I'd love to see that All-Tournament Team come together and play against uh, another state. Terrific job done by Ankeny Centennial winning their school's second state soccer championship as they beat Ankeny today at three to two. And Brown again, the game winning goal at the 26 minute mark into the first half. So in the first 26 minutes, we had five goals and then the defenses took over. To, to be honest with you, in the first 26 minutes, that's when all the energy was put forth within this game. You know, and as we saw in the second half, it faded. And they were, they were looking for more possession, but you could see there was a lot of tired passes. Time now for the trophy presentation. Provided by the Iowa Farm Bureau, title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Ladies and gentlemen, the Class 3A runner-up, the Ankeny Hawkettes and head coach, Dan Birch. And now, your 2018 Class 3A champions, the Jaguars from Ankeny Centennial and head coach, Chris Allen. Congratulations to Ankeny Centennial winning the Class 3A state championship here in 2018 by a score of 3-2 to two over Ankeny. What a state tournament. The 1A title goes to Davenport Assumption 8-0 over Bishop Heelan of Sioux City. The 2A championship, the Lewis Central 1-0 as they defeated Waverly Shell Rock and in the 3A title game again, Ankeny Centennial victorious 3-2 over Ankeny. Well, that looks to wrap up our coverage of Iowa High School State Soccer Championships here from the County Soccer Park in Des Moines. Want to remind you, we've got more high school state championships to be awarded in late July as the state softball championships will be held from July 19th and 20th from the Rogers Sports Complex in Fort Dodge. For Justin Borster, I'm BJ Shapin saying so long here from County Soccer Park in Des Moines as you've been watching the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Girls State Soccer Championships on statewide television, Iowa Public Television. Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Soccer Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Fairway, along with Nabisco, Frito-Lay, and Sarah Lee, is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Girls Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Soccer Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community.